Chilla. <laughs> Boy, this holiday's a killer. <laughs> Gilda, is that you? Gilda! She looks like a Gilda. Looking for this. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, Naughty Pop. Police issue. Where's my wife? She's just where I left her. Last minute shopping. Spoiler alert. It sucks. What do you want? Oh, I thought I was playing Santa Claus. Oh, all right. I want a fire engine and a football and to deliver a message. Put the gun down and we'll talk. Sure! Ladies and gentlemen, Cyberland coming back to you with another uh, film review. This time we're moving on to a film that I I I never thought would ever come out, but it did, and it it's it's good. Batman: The Long Halloween um, Part One. So I would say it was back in high school or college I read um, The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller and at some point somebody recommended read The Long Halloween and I picked up the book and I read it and it was, it was really, really good. Fast forward, never thought this would happen but they made an animated film of that book and they did a very good job with it. So the film is pretty much about, um, I would say Batman's been in, been around for a little while now, and we already have a bunch of villains, but we don't have all of them yet. We have some of the rogues gallery, you know, we got Poison Ivy, Joker, Mad Hatter, Scarecrow, Calendar Man, uh, Solomon Grundy. But we don't have uh, Two-Face yet. So that's what Long Halloween's about. It's about Harvey Dent and who he was and what he ended up becoming, as well as um, what happened to the mob. For those watching, um, The Dark Knight, uh, Nolan's The Dark Knight, pretty much half of that story was a mixture of The Killing Joke and The Long Halloween. Because there's a lot of elements in here that are very similar in The Dark Knight. But in The Long Halloween, it's pretty much a lot of... Pretty much, it's, I wouldn't say cover to cover, but um, the story's very, uh, very accurate. There's a couple things they change, but for the most part, it's pretty much on, uh, on point. As far as the characters... I was cool with. What I really liked is they, they gave everybody a good amount of screen time. 
they didn't just focus on Harvey. They didn't just focus on Bruce and Batman or Alfred or Selina or even the, the Falcone family. They folk, Everybody had a good... Or I'm sorry, the Maroney family and the Falcone family. They gave everybody a good amount of time. Uh, this film is not for kids. There's nothing sexual per se in it. It's just... It's pretty violent. Language is pretty out there. And if you're expecting the Batman the Animated Series... Um, this is not something I would suggest your kids would watch unless they are a little bit more mature in regards to they, they kind of have an idea of violence and stuff and they understand that what Batman deals with. Otherwise, I would not have, I would not let your kids watch this unless you've had a good, they have a good understanding of how to good talk with them about that. And that's it. Uh, the gentleman who did Mark Hamill, for those who don't know, make sure I'm bleeding. Mark Hamill, for those who don't know, he is retired as, as Joker. I believe uh, the Arkham Asylum series, I think that was the last, I think that was it for him. He finally said, I'm going to stop. He's done enough of it. And, not, you know, he has. He's done about 20 years, if not more. So the gentleman that did Arkham Origins, they're utilizing him now to do the voice, the voice for Joker. And he does a damn good job. Honestly, unless you're really in tune, it's kind of hard to not catch that. Um, they sound very, very identical. But since, you know, most of us fans know Mark Hamill retired, we know who's covering for him and stuff, so. But villains were good. The depth of the behavior of Harvey Dent in this is pretty good. It's, it's gradually peeling back the layers to what he's eventually going to become. However, I felt maybe they should have had a little bit more of that in here as opposed to uh, part two, and I'll get into that. Um, I felt that was the only thing that was lacking with the film. I give it a four and a half out of five yes sirs. Action was good. The mystery of who the holiday killer is, uh, interesting. For in the comic, it was a certain individual, and here they changed it, and, and uh, you know, um, that's cool. Don't, don't really have an issue with that. As far as the pace of the film, it was pretty good. There wasn't any parts where it was dragging. It was it was pretty. It was pretty moving, pretty pretty steadily. So I would say, if you have never seen it and you don't know the comic, and you you want something different for the DC animated universe, check it out. You would not be disappointed. It is an excellent film. Not my favorite. But it's up there. I would say it's up there with, with a lot of the Batman animated films I've seen. This one is definitely up there. Because that's the one thing we, we haven't really had just yet. And I felt they, you know, bringing Harvey into here and, and showing what he became and why he became what he became. I, I think they did a very good job with that. I really enjoyed that. So with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.